Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina. Welcome to our Bitcoin 101 final sort of summary and conclusion episode where we are going to summarize the main arguments, frame it, and at the end I will also give you some of my thoughts about the topic. So let's get into it. We started this discussion revolving mainly around trust and integrity of money, but also our financial system. We talked about Satoshi actually wanting to distribute that power across different sort of uh, non-third party players to the hands of the people. In this, you have interesting kind of battle as well. You have government by the people, for the people, and, and you have these miners by the people, also for the people. Each one uh, kind of bidding to be the trusted party. With the central authority, we lost a lot of trust in the way that they are printing money to the debasement of currency, and it is a kind of a soft, hidden way of taxing wealth of people. With the central decentralized mining or a crypto ecosystem, this was supposed to be a way to prevent by hard coding these monetary policies into the system to prevent debasement of the currency, which is a great idea by itself. However, with deregulated finance, we have created another type of a problem, which is way to encourage illegal activities and harming potential of harming participants in that ecosystem. Following from this, discussion in the crypto space often turns to this very well-known phrase now, store of value. And this uh, investment mania is built on this irrational idea that crypto, specifically here Bitcoin, will be the store of value. Idea here is that regardless of what is happening short term in terms of the volatility in next 10, 20 years, 50 years, in long term this volatility will translate in the net positive return. So often you hear phrases hodl or hold your coins because tomorrow it will win the race. So no matter how much it goes up and down, idea is tomorrow you will be better off. You will basically store that value safely and so on. Now, uh, this idea that you have net positive return regardless of the volatility is again constructed on this notion that the value is preserved not because there is something specific intrinsic in the whole crypto but its value is derived from me let's say person a being able to sell my coins let's say in 10 years to person b for maybe double so my store of value let's say i pay this hundred dollars my store of value of this $100 is built by selling to another person for more. So store of value means you will give me more of your money in the future. That's the basic idea. And then why would you give me more money in the future for my own money? Because you hope the third person will come after you and they will give you even more. So when we say store of value, that we have kind of created from ecosystem, it's basically everybody is kind of insuring each other. The next person is insuring my value and next person is insuring their value. Here is something worth $1, you will pay me for the two. So you preserve my value by paying double than I paid. And somebody will pay you double and so on. I think this incredibly looks very much like those, and I, I know it's hard to maybe hear it, but it does look incredibly similar to Bernie Madoff schemes. And that's why I said in the last video, whether people intentionally understand that or not, there is a P word, pyramid, being built unintentionally maybe, or irrationally, where it is, a, it, it is very similar to those Bernie Madoff type of schemes where your value comes on the back of bringing other people in and they're bringing more people in. There is no other way that this value is preserved. Now, a lot of people will immediately jump on this and say, well, look at the stocks. Aren't they the same? 
Look at the gold. Is it the same? So if we were to compare crypto to the shares, for example, we would have to compare it to the empty shell company that is producing nothing, but it issues the shares and then person buying the shares is selling them to another person and then the, to the third person. And therefore, value is uh, created in that way. And somebody could claim, I'm preserving my value. Price is growing, but does that tell us about the value of that empty company? Even with the recent GameStop saga, when the shares went up above fundamentals, we said this, this is the bubble. This is a frothy market just waiting to, to burst. And anybody inviting us to invest in some stocks like that, where there is no fundamentals, there, there is no reason, we would say this is a kind of a scam that pe persons are, people are running, which is different than normal corporations that derive the profit for the investors from the economic activities today or tomorrow. Tesla will make, let's say, more cars, sell them, and therefore there will be economic activity that is, uh, that is being generated and shared with the shareholders. So based on fundamental analysis, we have different valuation of different shares. Not all of them are the same. And you wouldn't be able to list and claim something without legal recourse and a legal environment being wrapped around these shares. That's why it's hard to compare decentralized, unregulated crypto or any project related that is just based on some white paper with properly structured uh, shares that we have transparency, we have you know governance and all of these other issues. When it comes to the gold comparison, gold has independent properties that crypto does not have. Gold does not need any network to support it, to make it work. It does not have a switch on and off button. Crypto can be switched off. It can be legally turned off if there is regulation or need. So the people who are thinking that this is the new world order, no one can interfere and it will conquer everything. We have many examples of history for various reasons where legally government switched up. Look at the Napster mega uploads just for the purpose of harm that comes to the artists from the copyrights and they switch it off. That sort of network now maybe exists in some pockets, but it is not investable asset class. You don't go to the market and say, look, I'll build the next version of Netflix with the copyrighted materials and then it will become bigger than Netflix and nobody can switch us off. So this idea around store of value, it used to be currency. That's how it started. We have seen since then that nobody is using this argument that much uh, because it's much less efficient than what we have today. You just need to look at the finality of the payment, which we talked about to see how it works. If you remove speculators and those illegal activities and some symbolic commercial transactions, nobody is using it in day to day. And even when you say now to the people, I using crypto for this or that, they say, oh, well, it's not even for, for that purpose. It's a store of value. So these claims seems to be revolving Whenever it's convenient, new claim is made. So you don't, you cannot catch it what it is. So before it used to be next currency of the future, but now it's not a currency, it's a store of value. They tell us invest in it, in the specific cryptos here and there, and they screen it and so on. But then they say, we don't know what's going to happen because might be another crypto in the future. Then they say it's a digital gold, but it's also superior to the actual gold. Why it is a digital gold? Because it can do online transaction, be, be online currency that gold cannot be. But then they just told us also that it's not currency, but the store of value. So if it is not currency, how can it be digital gold? If it is a store of value, well, as a store of value, it's, it's already inferior to physical gold that is backed by laws of physics that God created. These circular arguments you cannot catch. This whole debate wants to be hot and the cold at the same time. If you buy the crypto when it's going up, it's going to the moon. Rockets are flying. You understand everything. They max their credit cards. They take the mortgages, savings for this purpose, not to store it as a value. They're just basically engaging in socially acceptable gambling. Once the price goes down, then the new talk is weak hand sold, buy the dip. And so whatever way market goes up, they have one story. They have memes for that. When it's going down, they shame those who sell. Volatility doesn't concern them so much as this irrational idea that in the future it will be net positive. This whole thing reminds me of the global financial crisis when people would take the toxic assets, CDOs, and because they had a great AAA rating, they would sell them. Today, you have a memes and those pump and dump schemes that are providing meme ratings. 
we started talking about trust and integrity in money and its core financial institutions and functionality. Crypto on one side exposed some important problems, which is self-interested, lazy government policies that tax our money by printing it. And sometimes even if it is with good intentions, like we have with the COVID situation and stimulus. At other times, it's to benefit different bank lobbies like during the global financial crisis. The words of famous Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah are very important for us to ponder about. He said that the good of mankind cannot be realized except in social order because everyone is dependent on another. And administration of the affairs of men is one of the greatest obligations of religion. Therefore, I'd say that good money and good financial system needs two things. One is it needs collective cooperation that disincentivizes, disincentivizes the basement of currency. And it also needs social order to prevent harm. Two of these components together preserve the wealth, which is the core aim or makasid of Islamic law or Sharia. In this equation, government is debasing our money, but the crypto ecosystem is debasing social order. Reflecting on some of the work of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, we learn that nobody should be in the business of making money from money, and no one should be in the business of making money from making money. The reason for this is in order to close doors to injustice, reduce the chance to devour wealth by false pretenses. Minting of coins should be public good, something that is done by public treasury. States should be responsible for currency expansion and checking erosion of value of money. Workers who mint the coins or make the currency need to be independent, just like you have judiciary system that is independent. It's not privatized. It's not under somebody. They are paid by us people, so it can serve us objectively, truthfully. And that's why even Imam Ghazali, when he talks about money, he says it's a judge, judge of other commodities. So how can judge be in the private hands? It needs to be actually not for profit. Money should be not for profit activity. Shouldn't be in, no one should be incentivized to do it for profit. And even the workers who work need to be independently paid from Beitul Mal, all public treasury. And the reason for this is because money and the system is issue of public welfare. Printing or minting coins should be in proportion to value of transaction so that just prices are ensured. No one should be profiting or starting business in money. Satoshi recognized the problem. That's why in Genesis Coin, he put a message about stimulus that was given to the banks. But he aimed his invention in the wrong direction, and he created a system and a coin that cannot be regulated, that is actually debasing social order and can bring about much more harm than benefit it derives. Instead, my belief is that this interesting way of thinking about transparency, blockchain and technology in general, should be used to put a spotlight where the Genesis blockchain first pointed out. And that is how did the government put that stimulus in the hands of the bankers. In fact, blockchain and crypto should help us to focus on irresponsible and undisciplined policies by the government and central authorities, and not just to correlate them with special interest groups. Now, with that in mind, I would like to read you my final thoughts. Often I'm asked, is the crypto something that is halal or haram? Should I invest? Things like that. This is a topic that heavily is dependent on the way that we understand the issue at hand, how we analyze it. My intent here is purely to inform you to give you my arguments transparently so that you can see how I'm looking at the issue and how I'm judging the issue. I could be right or wrong. So I, I wouldn't use language halal or haram when it comes to this. So with that in mind, I'll read you some of the uh, my final thoughts. This is, I would say, my uh, general view when it comes to Bitcoin and the whole ecosystem. So we said that Every economic system aims to preserve the trust and integrity of money. 
and Satoshi Nakamoto designed peer-to-peer electronic currency Bitcoin, he wanted to distribute the trust away from financial institutions and into the hands of ordinary people. As Bitcoin's value increased, many took it as a sign that we are witnessing a breakthrough in the way we conduct commerce. While the idea behind this experiment was noble, but the reality of this experiment is a whole different story. The core function of money is in its use as a medium of exchange for facilitating commercial transactions, such as buying and selling goods or services. Since very few people use Bitcoin for legal commercial activities, Bitcoin has very little intrinsic utility as a functional currency. This lack of real usage is what further renders Bitcoin useless as a unit of account and store of value, which are additional features of a proper currency. So what is driving price growth? The majority of Bitcoin investors are buying into Bitcoin, hoping that someone else will come along and buy it from them at an even greater price, and so on. It is this irrational expectation that is driving the price for now. And finally, the key argument about the trust that Satoshi placed in the decentralized system is in doubt, as almost the entire blockchain is being determined by a handful of corporate entities. It seems that despite the best intentions, we have ended up with far less efficient and trustworthy system than anticipated. Therefore, investing in Bitcoin is encouraging the creation of an unethical ecosystem where the potential for harm is far greater than a benefit it provides. In my opinion, it is not an asset class for responsible and ethical investors. Thank you very much uh, for watching this. Share if you find this useful information. Uh, from time to time, if there is a need, I might put a few additional updates uh, to this video. Subscribe on my website here uh, for notification uh, and other videos that are coming. We are planning uh, some interesting videos about Islamic economy and finance, so make sure to subscribe. My name is Almi Cholan. This was Bitcoin 101. We'll see you, inshallah, soon in another video. Take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum.